Okay, so what I want to accomplish here today is I want to take a look at how to um, design the gumball machine in Tinkercad. So I already went ahead and signed in again. Just a reminder, you want to um, sign in and use go through Google with more providers. Once you've done that, you should come to this page. If not, click on the Tinkercad symbol and it'll bring you here. Um, create new design and you should go into a page that looks like this. Uh, one thing I would definitely do right away, the name's going to be something crazy. You click on it, change it to Gumball Machine, and then that'll take care of that. Another thing we need to do, it's going to be default to millimeters. We don't want millimeters. We build it in inches. We want to draw it in inches. Um, so over here in the lower right-hand corner, uh, Snap Grid is set to 1 millimeter. Go to edit grid. I'm going to change this to inches. And just to make this a little easier, let's go 12 inches by 12 inches and update grid. All right. On top of that, a second thing you're going to need, you're going to need either our website or the paper copy if you're in class of the gumball machine. Um, get there from our website. And again, this is all you can get here through Classroom. Go into projects. 8th grade gumball machine and here is our drawings um, I'm going to expand these just to have them a little larger maybe a little too large there that's better okay and for our sake I think this is just fine here I can zoom in here but the window stays the same um, Making this, we're going to make this the same basic way we build it. I'm going to start with the base. I'm going to do level A. I'm going to do both together. Uh, level B, then the slide, then level C. Then we'll come back when we put the pegs in um, and put the chamfers on the base at the end just because it doesn't need to be done right now. So initially, we jump to the drawing. Our base, it is 5 inches by five inches by three quarters of an inch thick. So jump in here. Um, one more thing we want to set over here on the left, we have a number of different buttons. The bottom one, I want to switch to orthographic mode. Perspective mode is going to look like this. Um, when you're looking at something in perspective mode, it's a little more realistic, but um, we can see different you know if I click on the top I'm gonna see I'll show you real quick make life easy if we go to the top I can see more than just the top I can see some of the other sides here in orthographic mode I only see the top it's looking dead on at that view that's what we're gonna want for this project um, and actually while I'm at it that'll work just fine I'll click on my box because all the base is is a rectangle. Um, if we click on one of the outside corners, I can simply type in my dimensions. 5 inches, enter. 5 inches, enter. And I'm going to drag it more towards the center here. Um, and go back to view where I can see more than just the top. Um, last thing we need to do is set the depth or the height thickness, whatever we want to call it here. Uh, the cone moves this off of the plane here. We don't want to do that. We want the white box in the center. And 3 quarters, of course, 0.75. Now there's our base. Um, next, we're going to move on to level A. If I jump back here, level A, there's two of them. 4 inches by 4 inches, also 3 quarters of an inch thick. Uh, since we have two stacked on top of each other, instead of doing two separate ones, we could, it's fine, it won't matter if you do, but um, three quarters plus three quarters would give us an inch and a half. I'm just going to make one four by four square that's an inch and a half thick instead. So I'm going to come back here. Um, just my preference, but after I do each layer, I like to make it look a little more realistic. I'm going to turn it brown. At least somewhat closer to wood. 
uh, for my next level, instead of bringing, if I bring a box over now, it's going to set down in, you know, we're still on the bottom work plane. Um, I can work with that, but it's going to be much easier. Take work plane, drop it on top of the base. Now bring over another box, and we'll set this up like we did before. Click on the outside corner here, and let's put in our dimensions. Four inches. Four inches. Three quarters or points five. One thing we will need to do everything in decimal putting it in. Once you put it in, it actually shows up as a fraction, but um, at least at this point in time, Tinkercad does not accept fractions. Uh, setting this into place. Uh, one thing I'm going to do is go to the top so I can look straight down on it. I can drag it over close. And, you know, we can get it pretty close here, but um, just to make sure. Uh, we do have the grid on here, and whatever my snap grid is, is how, what this is going to show up as. Uh, right now, we're in eighths. Um, we could check to make sure that, you know, we're, uh, well, this isn't, base is an extra inch on top of the level A, um, which would give us a half inch on each side. So we should have a half inch here, half inch here, half inch here, and a half inch here. Uh, if not, we just need to adjust a bit. Um, you notice the base on mine is not quite right on a grid. It actually might be easier for me to move this. Um, I'm going to change my snap grid to something small. I'm going to move that up so we're right on a line here. Um, almost there. There we go. I'm on it here. I'm on it here. That's good. Um, I want to slide over to the right so I'm on the grid here. both sides we're good I could have just moved this and set it on place but um I think it's gonna be easier that way here if you look I'm right on a corner I'm right on a corner those are let's set it to an eighth right now I have one two three four eighths or half inch one two three four eighths or half inch one two three four one, two, three, four, we're centered. Another way we could check this, the possibility here, um, I could take a, another box, bring it out here, let's change the color to something different so it's easier to see. And since I want a half inch on each side, let's change this to half inch, half inch. And if I slide it over, Corner. Make sure I'm right on the corner. It should match up so it's just touching the corner of my red level A. Um, I can drag this over to this corner. Same thing we're touching. We're touching. We're touching. We're good. I'm going to drag this out and just leave it for uh, measurements later. Um, there is a ruler tool. You gotta place it. Uh, it can be honestly a pain. I don't really care for it that much, so I'm just gonna dismiss it. I think this method would be much easier for you. I'd recommend this or watching the uh, squares on here. So let's go back to a different view. Remember, we have two of these on top of each other. I set it three quarters. I really wasn't thinking. Um, since I want two of those, I want an inch and a half, 1.5. That's both stacked on top of each other. Um, so that one's done. I can go ahead and turn that to the same color brown so I know I'm done with that. <clears throat> and actually for sizing it might be easier just to get rid of this because I'm going to change my work plane. I can always bring another one in. New work plane, drop it on top of level A. Level B, four inches long, one inch wide, three quarters thick. Again, if we jump back here and see how it fits in here um, on each outside edge of the subassembly. 
So, another box over. Really doesn't matter where I put it now, but I'm going to get it close. And one inch is fine for our width. I need my length at four. So, I'll go ahead and set my thickness now to three quarters, 0.75. Back to the top like we did before. Um, you can see it's less than an eighth of an inch off here. An eighth of an inch isn't going to cut it for the snap grid. I'm going to go with the 64th for fine tuning and just put it even here along the edge. Outside of it, we can look and see and make sure we're good. If I go to some of the other views, I look from the top here. You can see I'm just a little bit off this way. 64th over, pretty good here. Um, we can jump around to the front side. Um, pretty well lined up with both edges here. If I go over one more, I think it actually sets me off more. So jump back. That should be fine. Um, let me go back to more of what this would be considered a nice metric view. Since I have one set, I can use the duplicate button, and now I have a second one. Um, so this doesn't take forever. I'm going to change my snap grid to, let's say, a quarter of an inch. And even though you couldn't see it, now you can. There's my second part B. And because I had the one set up already out on the outside edge here, Using the quarter inch, it should be perfectly aligned with uh, the lower level. And at that point, go ahead and turn that brown, that brown. Now, one thing to keep in mind at the moment, these are not connected. So this, this, level A, and the base are all separate entities. And that could pose an issue. If you accidentally move something, that's going to be an issue. Um, to prevent that from happening, click on one of them, hold down the shift key, and click the rest of the parts that we have. You go over here to the upper right hand corner, and this button that I'm over top of is group. I want to group those together. Um, now, this will be one solid piece instead of multiple parts. Uh, we need a slide. So now we can go ahead and focus on the slide. Take a look here. Um, total length, 8 inches. Again, watch your arrows from here to here. 8 inches. It is not 3 fourths. It's 11 sixteenths. You might need a calculator to get some of these. Uh, same with like when we put in holes and stuff. You might need a calculator for some of these numbers. Um, but for now, what we want and I just realized that I am missing a dimension. I went back and redid this drawing recently. Um, I will fix that and update it, but I'm not going to remake this video because it'll take too long. But um, the slide is going to be one and one eighth wide. So, eight inches long, one and one eighth wide, 11 sixteenths. Let's jump back over here, bring out a block for that part. I'm going to go ahead and set my 11 sixteenths right now. Um, I have a calculator handy, 11 divided by 16, and I get 0.6875. Round it down, that's fine. It's not a big deal. Um, again, our size is here. Length, we want 8. Drag it back a bit here, and width, we want 1.875, which is 1 and 7 eighths, 1, 8, 7, 5. And if I look at the top, um, I'm right up against the edge here. I have my snap grid to a quarter of an inch. I need to drop that down to something less, let's say a 16th, and I'll just kind of center it. It's fine if it's not dead center. If I really want it dead center, I can go to 32nd or 64th and even that up some. 
There we go so far. Um, and again, if we go right flat at the front here, or I'm sorry, the right side and the way I just started drawing it, but um, this is a little bit smaller. That's because we need to allow room for finish and it actually needs to slide. If it's the same size, it's not going to slide inside of the slot here. Okay. Um, for that, we need to add some holes. One of these is going to be a through hole. I don't want to run the risk of accidentally putting a hole into the subassembly I've made so far. I'm just going to drag this off to the side for now. Make life easier. This is one where it's going to be much, much easier to use a box for sizing things up. Um, I will need a, three cylinders for holes. I'm going to do one hole first. I want to go ahead and take care of the uh, large hole first. I drug this up a bit uh, because I'm going to drop this a little bit lower just to make sure it cuts the whole way through. If I swing up here, you can see that will guarantee that I cut the whole way through this thing. This will be a through hole. Um, let's jump back here real quick. This is the hole I'm putting in right now. It's a one inch hole and it is three inches in from the front end here. So go ahead to my top view. Line it up where we can see a little better here. Uh, that button I just clicked is will zoom in on whatever part you're looking at. Uh, let's take a box, drag it out here. Red on red doesn't work. Change it a different color. Since the center of the hole is three inches in and eleven, I'm sorry, fifteen sixteenths over. Again, here's where my fifteen sixteenths is coming from. The center line for all of the holes. Um, let me set this to those dimensions. So, fifteen sixteenths. Another one that I'm not real sure of off the top of my head. With calculator, fifteen divided by sixteen. 0.9375, so 0.9375, enter, and 3 inches, enter, I just need to line this up with the outside corners here, edges, and the end. This point, the way I did this, this is the center of the hole, so I just need to take my hole, what I can do is use these blocks here, to find, you know, I'm right in the center of it, I'm on my center line. Um, we have block here, same thing, I can check I'm right in the center of it. I'm in good shape to cut out my hole now. Um, slide this out of the way. To cut, select your hole, hold down the shift key on your keyboard, select the slide, and again over here and group. Now we have our hole. Uh, now we have two blind holes, or holes that do not go the whole way through the set. I'm going to jump back to the drawing. Um, first one, make sure you go from the same side, kind of like when we drilled these, you want to make sure you're going from the same end of the part in. So we went from this end in three inches, I want to go from this end in three fourths of an inch. It's already at 15 16 I just need to set it to 3 quarters instead of 3 inches. So 0 0.75. There we go. Drop it back down to my corner. Um, I'm lined up again. Bring a new cylinder hole over here. I'm just going to drop it about the center. And change my size. It might move. I don't even know. Let's see. Um, again, just a reminder. My diameter here is shown right here. Two holes, quarter of an inch diameter, they're a half inch deep. So, what I want to do is, and with this one right now, um, because my plane's here, it's going to set it to the bottom. Uh, all I'll need to do is move it up a quarter of an inch. I want a half inch deep. This is, well, yeah, let's move it up a quarter of an inch, and that'll set us close enough to our depth. 
technically I'd be a little bit off, but it's fine. Um, so my diameter here, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, diameter. You can see it's moved all around here. I need to center that back up, same as we did. Center my box. Same thing here. Let's just move this up so we got half inch depth. Quarter of an inch. Said so, um, that'll give us about a half inch deep. Since we're not actually building off of this, it's not that big a deal. And. We could go ahead and group. Now, traditionally, with a lot of programs, you'd make a hole, you'd make a separate peg, um, even Autodesk programs, which Tinkercad is an Autodesk program, but it's a very, very simple CAD program. Um, we would make the hole, and we would set the uh, peg down in there. I can do that here. That's fine. I can bring out a cylinder, not the hole, but the regular cylinder. We'll set it to a quarter of an inch diameter, so 0 0.25, 0 0.25. Um, I would want to match my height um, that I offset this, so I'd go up a quarter of an inch. To make that easier, I could have just changed my grid, snap grid, to a quarter and had one step up but you know any of that will work it worked just fine um my height is not an inch on these my height on the pegs which we have severed here three quarters and 0.75 and now i just need to place it in the hole so that's a traditional approach at this I'm just using the arrow keys to get this over here. Get where it looks good. Let's see. Yep, looks fine. There we go. And there's our one peg. Um, another approach. Since I am not creating a drawing like this from our model here, uh, I don't really have to do it that way. It's good to kind of see that and good to see how that works, but. Um, and typically, in most CAD programs, that's what we would want to do. Here, not really that big a deal. I'll show you another way we can do this. Again, change your snap grid, and that goes a little faster. Up here. And relocate a little bit. I do want to bring that down one more. There we go. Let me set it up on my edge, and we're good. Um, this one is only one fourth, so right now it's set at three fourths. I only want one fourth. Still the same distance over. It's just this distance I need to change. 0.25, one fourth. And of course, it's going to move it the way I don't want it to. Drop it back down to the edge here. Make sure we're good. We're good. Top. Same thing we did. Uh, you know, before we drilled, basically drilled a hole, um, cut a hole, and added a peg. What I'm going to do this time to make this a little bit simpler, I'm going to drag a work plane over on top of this. Bring over my cylinder. I'll just size it first. Point two five. Uh, now, um, we had a three quarter inch peg and we set it a quarter of an inch above the initial work plane. Um, with this, what I can do is just set how high that would actually be above the top of the slide. So, since the slide is not three quarters, it's not actually one fourth. It's going to be 
um, a sixteenth over that. So five sixteenths of an inch would give me point three one two five. And we can double check here. These should be the same exact height. If I did everything right. There you go. No same height. So swing it on down here. Just gotta put it on our corner like we've been doing. And again, um, the way we're drawing this, not making an actual drawing from it, this will work just fine. Get this out of here. Um, before I move this, I want to make this one solid piece. So again, clicking each individual part, holding the shift key, group it. There we go. And I'll just take this and slide it back over into position here. Is our slide and I can always make a new one of those get rid of it um, just so you know to get the work plane out of here uh, you can just drop one back out in no man's land and it'll go back to its normal spot um, let's see what we have here so I can see I must have been just a little bit off with uh, these um, I could ungroup them, go back and tweak them. I could actually come back with a large block and just shave the edges off just to make sure they're exactly where I want them. Honestly, it's not that big a deal. Um, we could do any of those things. This, just so it's easier to see what we're looking at, I'm going to jump back to the top. Zoom it in here. I like to set this so the whole be kind of out like we're getting candy yeah. um, again we can turn this the same color as the other parts that are done and because we don't need it to actually move because it's just a drawing we'll group it and now it's set in place okay now we are ready for level C. Let's go ahead and make level C. Um, just like level A, 4 inches by 4 inches by 3 fourths, except we have a hole in the center. So, bring out my work plane. Remember, this is a little bit lower than these levels, so I want to put it on top of uh, level B here. Bring out a box. I'm going to leave it over here because we need to drill a hole, cut a hole through it. Size it four, four, the cylinder for the center here. Place it about where I want it. It's already one inch diameter, which is exactly what we want. Let's get the top. And again, best bet is to just bring in a separate box and size it for what we want here. Change my color. Half of four, of course, is two. So two inches, two inches. Face it carefully here. Go. Down. That should be just fine. So right on the center point here. Um, if we look at those two again, looking at the black boxes here and kind of looking down on the center here, um, that should be just fine. Get rid of this. So the holes on the bottom here, um, it might cut through. I'm going to drop it just a tiny bit just to make sure it cuts clear through here. Select one, hold down shift, select the other, group, 
and it is upset about something. No, it's not. It just took a little bit longer. Sometimes you might get parts that have like weird, instead of black outlines, they have red. Some kind of error is occurring if that happens, but in this case it turned brown. We're good. Um, go ahead and place this where we want it on top. Run it over here. And we can go to the very right side and make sure that it's right on where we want it to be. Um, you can see this actually looks like it's more in line with where the bottom is. And these two levels were out of place. Um, let me try and fix that because that personally is going to drive me crazy. I need to ungroup one more time. And now I have separate levels here. Um, I can go right to the right. I can zoom in on one of my corners here. You can use the zoom over here. Um, if you have a mouse, hold down the mouse wheel and drag and move this around. Um, it's a little tougher when you're not using mouse. If I turn that off, I really have fine control. Now we look like we're dead on here. Let's check down below. A little bit off. Um, I might just might be easier just to move this part. Same thing. We're perfectly in line now. Check out our other side here. be in pretty good shape. Let's see, this piece needs to come out just a bit. Um, there's lots of ways to build in CAD programs. Another way I could have potentially done this is I could have made a four inch block. I could have cut the slot out here, made the slide and slid it into place. Um, you know, as you use the program, you'll and I figure out what works for you. Right now I can just, all I did is just click and drag in the box over everything, group it all, and I don't want it red, I'll turn it brown. Here we go. Work plane over here. Um, you can see, still must be a little bit off, but it's fine. When we go around it, it looks good, it looks clean. Um, even looks a little more natural having that line there. Last thing we need to do is put in our chamfer. Uh, for that, I need another box. And for this one, I'm just going to leave the work plane very at the very bottom. Um, I just need to have something that is longer than my part here. So there's that. Uh, I can just make this a skinny box. All I want to do is put in my chamfer. So swing around here. Again, definitely some differences from traditional CAD. You guys are probably not having any experience with traditional CAD for the most part. Um, shouldn't be an issue if uh, you have, you know, just it's a little different here. I need to set this to 45 degrees. Because normally there's a chamfer tool. You click on the edge and it does it. Not the case here. Um, I need to make this a hole. Let's take a look at the right side here. And half grid off. Take forever. Say 16th of an inch here. I can just drag this up a little bit and whatever I do just make sure it's pretty even the whole way around the part here an easy way to do that is I can just duplicate this part 
We'll go one, two, three, say three, six, quarter of an inch I believe is what we have it set up for here yep quarter of an inch by 45 degrees is my chamfer since I have it on 16th I went in four clicks four sixteenths would be quarter of an inch um, I can duplicate this I'll do one duplication first slide it over here and let's see what happens here nothing what I'm going to need to do is just change my angle going the other way. So my arrow is up here. If you go on the outside, you can go fine tuning. If you go on the inner side, it's going to be um, larger jumps. Make life a little easier here. There we go. The reason it's shown up as 90 is it's 90 degrees from where I was before. So I'm pretty much touching the edge. One, two, three, four sixteenths. That should keep me in pretty good shape here. Um, we may find out otherwise. But let's see. Right now they don't exactly look equal. Um, I could use a block and set them. It's probably my best bet. And since I brought it in when I wasn't set up correctly, it's all crazy. Let's drag a box over here. Let's set this to 0 0.25. 0 0.25. And I'm just going to set this right into that corner and use that as my judge. So, maybe not my best idea ever. <laughs> now it's going to be hard to get at. To get this out of the way. Take this. So, change my snap grid to something smaller again. Good. Actually, to make life a little easier. Drag this out so I don't have that problem again of not being able to use it. Turn it in until we're cutting. The whole part there. There we go. About a quarter of an inch in here. Um, so here, zoom out a bit, slide over, take this and drag it over to this side. And it looks like that one was actually pretty good. It was my left side that was off. Um, so there's those two. I am going to duplicate this again. Run it out of the way here. And select the whole assembly. Shift key. Select this chamfer. This chamfer. Group. And here we go. There's my two chamfers so far. Um, this time, we need to change things around a little bit here. So I'm going to take this that I duplicated. I want to rotate it this way, just like before. Give it 90 degrees. Run it out here. Set it up in place. Um, I'm just going to go ahead now and duplicate it. Drag one over this way. Same thing we did before. I need to change 90 degrees because of where I was at before. There we go. Now this is going to be off from what I had changed before. Do 0.25 this way. And something totally different outward here. Um, And set that in on our side. All right. So put it right up against the edge here. Run this in until I'm cutting right through. 
I there's one. Uh, it's a little off. Again, it's not gonna be the end of the world, but uh, that looks a little better there. Looks a little closer. Drag this over. Set it on this end. That looks good. And let's bring this in. So same thing. We're cutting right through that intersection. Um, might actually be easier to be a little bit of an angle so I can see that. Roadblock, no longer needed. Our chamfer blocks here. Holding shift. Select everything. Group it. And there we have it. There is our part. Um, still bothering me a little bit, to be perfectly honest, but like I said, it's really not that big of a deal. Um, looks pretty good. That may, I, I typically use a different program, but that might even be just because it's a separate part, even though it's grouped and it's one cohesive thing, it might just be because it is a separate block. Um, but in the end, should end up with something that looks like this. Um, please make sure you use your dimensions well. Um, they should be accurate, so uh, I'm going to have you share this with me. When I come in and check all your dimensions, they should be right on point. Um, if I ungroup it, I should be able to check each part and make sure that, you know, that these are 4x4, four four, that this is 8x1 uh, and 7 eighths. 5x5 five five and so on. Uh, to share this with me, once you get it finished, we go here to share and over in the right hand corner, um, invite people, and it will give you a link. Take that link and you can actually just upload it into uh, Classroom and I can get it that way. And that concludes making our gumball machine, just like we saw here. Hopefully it turned out well.